Okay, so this is a little album we're gonna be creating. Um, if you wanna see a full walkthrough of the finished product, you can skip through to the end of the video about five minutes before the end, and I walk through the whole thing. Um, but this is essentially a little house design, sorry. And I'm having trouble because my camera, I need to hold it up for you guys to see this one so it's not on my stand. So I just apologize for that. Um, but basically it's a little 3D, 3D style album um, that has little pop out sections and you will have space for pictures on the back, but super cute. So check out at the end, um, the final product or check out the walkthrough video first and then come on over back here to see how to make this for yourself. Hey everyone, so here's the material we're going to use for this fun little project. All I have this year is a 12 by 12 paper pack for Happy Haunting because my local store actually sold out um, of the other pieces that I needed. So I am going to make this exclusively using the paper pack, which means we're going to have some fussy cutting involved. But I'm so happy to see that I have definitely have some sheets from which I can fussy cut a bunch of images. So we're going to use this 12 by 12 pack um, from Doodlebug. I have did manage to get my hands on a little shaker pop that is so cute um, and we'll see if I decide to use that but it's just a really simple little house sort of looking little folio um, that you can put together real quick so let's get started okay so the first thing we're going to do is build sort of the house looking part and so what you need to do for that is choose your patterned paper and your cardstock um, in this case like you can actually use patterned paper for all the pieces but because um, i wanted we're going to have a patterned frame in the front i wanted to conserve some of my patterned paper and so i picked i decided to go with three pieces of patterned paper and then three pieces of black cardstock at any rate, whatever you decide to do, you're going to need six sheets of paper that are cut down to nine by eight inches, okay? So that's six sheets cut down to nine by eight. Um, mind the pattern, uh, mind the pattern, so the nine inches will be vertical, okay? And then the eight inches across. So if you have a pattern that's going in a certain direction, then make sure that you put that the right way. So I'm just going to actually use my um, guillotine, which I never use, but I figured I need to cut multiple sheets. So I'm going to do that. So I'm just lining up my paper so that I've got cutting down on each side and then my eight inch side here. So there's one set out of the way. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my three black cardstock sheets. If you're using the same kit as me and you wanna see what patterns I used, um, I picked up this one with all the little ghosts and like the different little patterns on it. I'm um, trying to see what it's called. This one is called nothing because I don't think, oh, it's called Happy Haunting which is the same as the paper line. Then I picked this one with the little eyes and it's called Bugs and Hisses. That's so cute, Bugs and Hisses. And then I chose this one with the green and then the stripes on the back and that one's called Spooky Spectrum. Okay, so those are the ones I chose. Keep in mind, you will see the back of the pages as well um, with the design of this album. So pick what patterns that you enjoy looking at. Okay, so I've cut my three pieces of patterned paper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut down my black card stock again into nine by eight, three pieces, nine by eight. So we have six pieces in total. That, I just, I love this guillotine. I never take it out because it's huge. But if you've got a bunch of stuff to cut, it really does a good job. All right, so we've got our pieces. So the next thing we're going to do is score these, okay? So we are going to score at four inches on the eight inch side, all right? So let me just put this to the side. Okay, let's go ahead and score these all at four inches. So your eight inch side is across the top. I'm just gonna score these down here at four. Um, if you want to make this sturdier, you can use a heavier cardstock. Um, you can use, sorry, cardstock as a base and then cover it with patterned paper as you like. Um, but I'm just gonna do a quick little version with just using the patterned paper as the base. I think this is about a 65 pound 
cardstock, so it's not too thick, but once you start sticking the panels together, I think it still, it still works out nicely. But it's your preference. If I'm doing a folio, usually I use a heavier paper, but in this case, um, with this style, I, I like the way this, this turns out. Okay, so now we've got all of that done. So we're gonna fold in half. Let me show you with a patterned one, because I think it'll be easier. So you're gonna fold this in half along the score line, fold all your cards in half, but we'll just do one together. And then I want you to take a corner, take the top corner and fold it back on itself so that you get a triangle. Okay, this is important. Just burnish that down so you'll be able to see the line. Okay, so do this on each of your pieces, okay, just like that. And then I want you to get your paper cutter and chop this piece off right along the score line. All right, so go ahead and do that with all of your sheets. Um, fold them in half along our first score line and then fold this piece back so you can see where you're gonna cut. And you're gonna cut this off on all of your pieces. Now, if you have a guillotine, you can you don't need to go through those all those steps. You just need to go through the step on one card and then you can stack them and do a couple at the same time. So you might have to do it on two because I'm I'm gonna do three cards at a time. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure my score line is vertical on all of them, and I'm gonna put these into my guillotine together. Um, you can also do this in your paper cutter if it can cut thick enough. But so I've just got the edge lined up with that score line that I made from folding the corner back, and I'm just going to chop that piece off. All right, so there's three pieces, and we can go ahead and do the same thing with our black. And so what you can do is actually take a pattern, the pattern one you've already cut is going to be your template, and stack those up, and just line up the edge here to your score line. There we go, and let's chop those off. There we go, so we have now have six beautifully, perfectly cut pieces. Okay, so now that you've done that on one side, you're gonna go ahead and do it on the other because we're trying to create a house shape. So I'm gonna do this on my patterned paper so you can see it better. So again, I'm taking the corner, I'm folding it into the center line. It's actually easier if you if you want to do it this way. Sorry, all I did was flip the paper over because I'm right-handed and this is easier for me. Okay, so now I've got my little line. I'm going to just burnish the edge again so I can see that better. Okay, so we're going to end up with a house shape, okay? So I'm going to use this as my template and see, I actually think I can cut through all six, but um, don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> Unless you know your guillotine, if you have a guillotine and can cut through them all, you may want to just do them individually, but I'm gonna try this out. And if it doesn't work, we'll end up with a little blooper reel at the end of this. Okay, so I've got that lined up and I'm just going to chop through, oops, there we go. I'm glad I did it and you didn't. Okay, so now let's just make sure everything looks lined up. You may have to just make, make some little adjustments. Okay, um, but don't get too fussed because you will fix it once you start putting everything together, you can make sure everything is lined up. They don't have to be exactly lined up because when the card opens or the little booklet opens, they are not gonna to be touching each other at the top. So that gives you, saves you a little bit of grace there from making sure that everything's exactly lined up, okay? So there, we've created six pieces that look like little houses. So let's set those aside and let's carry on and make the front um, frame part that makes this a little 3D image. Or, not an image, what am I saying? A 3D card or booklet, <laughs> okay? One second. Okay, so the next piece we're going to build is the pop-up frames. So we're going to need um, six pieces 
that measure seven and a half by five, and then six pieces that measure eight by five, okay? I'm going to do the eight by five first because they are going to be in the background and I'm going to use um, just plain bat cardstock for that because you won't see that paper as much, okay? So let's do that first. Let's go ahead and cut six pieces that measure eight by five inches out of black cardstock for the back. Okay, I'm going to do, I think, three at a time and I think I can get two out of each sheet. So three sheets of 12 by 12 should work for this. I'm not going to stack six again. That was a little bit too thick. So we're going to cut then again, we're going to cut this at, um, let's cut at five. And flip it around and eight. So there's a five by eight and then Three more again. Five by eight. So there are my six five by eight pieces. Okay, let's just put those to the side for a second. The other thing we're going to need is six seven and a half by five pieces. Now I want the ones, so if you remember, I have three pieces of patterned paper and three in black cardstock for the house part. So for the patterned paper, I'm going to, I just want black frames on this because otherwise it will get too busy. It's your preference how you want to do it, but I'm just going to go with black frames on patterned. And then the frames for the black, I will use patterned paper. So what that means is I'm going to cut three sheets, um, three pieces of seven and a half by five for my black. And then I'm going to cut um, three pieces of my seven and a half by five from patterned paper of my choice. So let me go ahead and do the block first. So we're going at seven and a half. By five, so there's two. And I'll just get one more. Okay, and we're gonna cut three more from our patterned paper. Okay, so I've picked my patterned paper. I've got two sheets here, so I can cut two at a time. And because my pattern's up and down, I wanna make sure that this is, my five inch cut is here, so that my pattern will be vertical, because these will sit horizontally. So there is my <coughs> five inch cut. And then my seven and a half. super cute little pumpkins and I think I'll use the back of one of these probably the orange back um, the pumpkins or no you know what I'm going to use the owls no yes sorry picking my paper should be doing this before I start the tutorial anyways so again I'm putting in my paper sideways at my five inch cut is first here five and then seven and a half okay perfect okay so we're here now with our seven and a half by five and our eight by five we have six pieces of each so 12 pieces in total and now we're going to do some scoring so let's start um with the seven and a half by five. So I want you to put the seven and a half inch side across the top and you're gonna score at half inch on either side, okay? Because this is where we're going to attach this to the house, the housey part. And because this is seven and a half, I want to score this in the middle. So that's going to be at three and three quarters. That should be the center of the sheet. Okay, so three and three quarters. And you can just fold that to make sure you've got it in the center. Yep, everything's lined up. Okay, so don't fold it up just yet. Just set that aside once you've scored them. So go ahead and score all of your seven and a half inch pieces. Um, and just again as a reminder we're scoring them at half on each end 
So half from the, from the edge and then at three and three quarters in the center, okay? And when we come back, we will score the rest of them, the other uh, larger pieces. Okay, so you should have all your seven and a half by five pieces scored. Um, let's do the eight inch pieces now. So eight inches by five, your eight inches runs across the top. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna score at half on each end and then at four, which is right down the center. Okay, so go ahead and score all six of your pieces, half at each end and at four, which is right down the center. And I'm going to pause the, you can pause here and when we come back, I will show you the next step, which is to cut out a frame in these. Okay, so I have my little cuddle bug here because I'm going to be using a die to cut my square out. You don't have to, if you don't have a die, that's totally fine. You can definitely cut this out on your paper trimmer. Just make sure that you leave the frame wide enough um, because if you make it too thin, you won't have any surface to um, decorate on, okay? So for all of these, for all 12 of these mats, we're gonna to have to cut out a frame. I am using um, this die, which is an inside out from Lawn Fawn. So it's these ones here, but you can use any rectangle die. So the one that, the size that I picked up is the, um, I believe it's cutting a four and a quarter by three inch space, okay? So that's what I'm cutting out. Four and a quarter by three inch is the size of the hole that you want to cut out. So go ahead and cut those out either with your um, paper trimmer. So just go, you know, place the blade inside, maybe draw out a template first with a four and a half, uh, sorry, four and a quarter by three card and then just use it as a template or go ahead and use your paper cutter. But I need you to do this on all six of the frames um, to have this little cut out this square on all six of uh, all 12 rather of these pieces so on both the seven and a half and on the eight inch by five when you get to the eight inch by five yes just use the same size frame or cut the same size space whichever way you're doing it because this one is going to sit in the back all right so it's most important that you have enough room around the edges to do your decorating so go ahead and cut out your inserted frame in all 12 of those pieces and we will come back and continue to the next step sorry and before i leave you i just want to make sure that everybody is doing this the same way your frame is going to be centered right in the center of the piece okay so just make sure you've got it right in the center from each edge and from the top and bottom okay guys let's take a quick inventory of all the pieces that we should have now so you should have in total six house cut pieces so six of these and they should all be scored down the center you should have six frames um, measuring seven and a half by five inches and your score lines are half inch on each side and then down the center and then you should have another six frames that are eight inches by five with the same size frame cut out the middle and also scored at half inch and then down the center so we're going to start actually putting the frames together into the onto the card bases okay so this is really simple um, I'm going to do one section and then you can pause the video and do the other six sections on your own. So let's do one of these together. So I'm going to choose my patterned paper. I'm going to remember that for the patterned paper, I decided that I was going to use um, just black frame. Okay, so I'm going to actually match up all the ones that I want together. So you're going to need one of your house pieces, an eight and a half frame, and a seven and a half frame okay your eight and a half will go on first the seven and a half go on second so i'm just going to set that aside and then for my black ones if you're following along in the patterns you're going to take still a black one a black frame <clears throat> um, in your eight and a half okay but your seven your smaller frame will be in the which will sit in the front will be in a pattern okay so that's what you want to do so just match them all up but let's go through one of these together okay so first thing you're going to do is fold your frames and you're going to fold them in the way that they're going to actually fold into the booklet so what i want you to do is fold the frame in half so that the center is a valley fold so like up and down like a V, okay? And then you're gonna fold the two scored pieces outwards. So I think that that is referred to as mountain fold, but it should all be very evident 
what we're about to do, which is stick these into the card, okay? And what you're going to do, because I need this to sit <clears throat> like that, because the card will then pop open and we'll have a cute little scene there. Okay, so your eight and a half frame is going down first in the back like that. So what you're gonna do is after you've done your folds and make sure that you burnish them well, so good to just get out your bone folder and just go over those really well because you want this to open and close really nicely. Okay, what you're gonna do is just get to your glue and I'm using liquid glue in this case. Um, if you want to, you can use double-sided tape as well. I just find the liquid glue is easier um, for me to use and I like the way it lasts as well. Eventually the double-sided tape seems to just kind of dry out. So what you're gonna do is just stick down one side to the corner here, like that, okay? So I just glued down on the back and glued that down here. Now, to get this in exactly the right spot, super easy, all you're gonna do is put glue down on your second tab, okay? And just hold that in place, and then just simply fold the top over and attach to the edge, all right? So that is what you will end up with, okay? All right. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with the smaller with the smaller frame on top. So go ahead and fold that in half in the center and then flip out these pieces that we scored at half an inch. Now fold them out. Okay, and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to put glue on the tab and we're going to just now this part can be trickier, but you're gonna lay that down right on top of the other frame, okay? All right, and now you're going to glue the second tab and very easy, very simply fold over and stick that together. All right, so now you can see how the pop-up frame works. Okay, so what you should end up with is that when this stands open, you have your front frame, obviously, in the front, and that is going to be able to stick out like that. And then you have the back frame where you can also glue pieces to make your little scene. Okay, so that's how we make it 3D. Okay, so we can fold that up now, just move it out of the way, and let's do one more together. So this time I'm going to do it on my black background, so I'm just going to fold this in half, make sure everything is nicely lined up before we get started, and oops, what is happening? So okay, here this is great for you guys to see. So I obviously cut this, did something funny when I was cutting it. So you can, if this happens, just go ahead and trim that off and make it even. It, like I said, it doesn't really matter when you put the whole thing together. What matters is that these edges are roughly the same because these, this, these edges are going to get stuck together. So what I want to do here is because this one is a little shorter, but I need to even it out. I want a pointy top. Um, I'm going to just actually fold, I'm going to refold this so that it lines up with the point. And then what I can do is just trim off the side. So I just, so see what I did? I just refolded that. So my point, my edge is pointy. And now I'm going to trim off this little excess here. You don't actually really have to go through this. But um, anyways, if you want to just line it up perfectly. So I'm glad that, that happened because it's so easy just to be a little bit off in your measurements. Okay, so now those still are the same size, um, but it'll all sort of be lined up at the top. Okay, so same thing now, except I am using black 
and black. So I'm going to get my bigger frame, my eight inch frame that goes down first. So again, I'm folding it up. And so this is really easy. It's just, this project just takes like, there's lots of steps, but they're not really difficult steps. So it's just a bit time consuming, but it's so cute when it's finished. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna glue this down to the edge here, like that. Okay, and you know what? Before I attach the other side, I'm gonna do both the left side and then we'll do both the right side together, okay? Because it's just easier rather than having this opening up. When it's stuck, it's a little bit harder to do when the bottom one's already stuck down. So I'm gonna do them one side and then the other. Okay, and make sure you're giving your paper a good burnish. Okay, because you're gonna want this one especially to flip out a little or stay flat. So make sure you're doing that. Okay, so I'm just going to keep this open. So now I'm gonna glue down this just simply, I'm just simply gluing it on top of the other frame right at the edge. And so also good not to use too heavy of cardstock for this, just because it can get bulky. Okay, so I'm gonna fold these over and I'm going to first, we'll do the bottom piece. So the outside frame, we'll call it. Okay, and we'll glue this frame to it. So just like that. And now I can glue this to the other side of our little house here, like that, okay? So that's it, so that's two of them finished already. So there you go, that's how we'll want it to look when it's standing up. So you can go ahead and pause the video and do the other four of your little sections and then we'll come back and start putting everything together. Okay, so now you should have um, all six of your pieces together with the frames, okay? So just set those aside and we're going to cut the joiner pieces, I call them. So what you're gonna need to do is cut five strips that measure five inches by one inch, okay? So they're going to be five inches tall by one inch wide. So I have some scraps which I'm gonna use up, um, happens to measure exactly five inches. So cut out five of these five by one inch slices, okay? And then, so it's two. You can score these down the center or you can just fold them in half. I'm gonna score them just because I find it's much easier. Um, to fold them in half, and um, I'll show you what we're gonna do with that next. So I just grab my scoreboard here, and so take each of these and just score them down the center at half an inch. Okay, fold them in half like that. And now for this, I'm actually going to um, well, I'm gonna use my liquid glue. I was going to switch over to double-sided tape just because um, the glue sometimes slides around. But anyways, this, when I'm using art glitter, it actually dries very quickly. So I think we'll be fine. So I'm just gonna show you one. So you go ahead and score all five of these at half, fold them in half, and I'll show you how this is going to go together. So let's just grab two of these and start to put them together. And we're gonna leave one side unattached, right? We're not attaching it all around. So that's why we only need five and not six. So what you wanna do is take your piece, okay? And I'm showing you, I'm folding it in and the folded edge is going to be glued down. The folded edge goes along the outside edge of your cardstock, okay? So not like this with the open edge here. I want the folded edge here because when I join them, I want it to open up in the center. I want this to stay closed from the front, okay? So I'm going to just glue, put some glue down here, put enough glue, because this you want this to stay sturdy, and I'm just gonna glue this down here right along the edge, okay? So see how that now flips open? 
there. And I'm very simply just going to glue as, keep it folded and glue the other side. And then take your next house piece and just glue this edge to the tab. All right, so you can see what we're doing here. We're joining all of these and just hold that for a second. Okay, so we're joining them here so that when it opens up on this side, I have the tab and on the front, I just look like the frames are joined. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that on all the pieces. So all of your five by one inch pieces scored down the center and just fold it in half and give it a burnish. Okay, and then once again, your folded side is pointing outwards. I'll just glue that down. And just, you know, be mindful if you have a certain way you want the patterns to flow. Just be careful of how you're sticking things down. Like I, for example, I'm doing one black and one white, uh, sorry, one black and one patterned alternating. So I'm gonna grab a black one now. And I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, so go ahead, glue all of those down, and when we come back, I'm just going to pause here while you do that, pause the video, and when we come back, we will start moving on to the next step. All right, let us continue our journey. So you should have these all attached to each other, and if you open it up, kind of like an accordion, but one end, these two ends are not attached, and we're going to deal with that now. Because when I open this up, I want it to stand up and I want to be able to make it join and spread it out so that people can see, oops, sorry, everything, because I'm going to put pictures on the inside of here, okay? So easy, what you need are some magnets, and I should have told you to cut six of these, but you're going to need another little strip of five um, five by one inch folded in half, okay? So really easy, you're just gonna do the same thing you just did, but instead of gluing the other side down, we're gonna put magnets down. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this on in the same way that we just did for the other pieces. I'll move my water out of the way, sorry about that. I got some water on my break, it's a little thirsty. Okay. So again, the folded side is out, okay? So I'm just gonna glue that down there. I'm just gonna hold that for a second. And then I think one magnet is probably enough for this because it's not like a big sort of heavy duty fold. I guess it's gonna, it'll stay with just one magnet. So I'm only gonna use one magnet. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pop out my magnet and find its partner, Whoop, there we go. Okay, so there's my two hat, my two sides of the magnet together. I'm just gonna put a dot of glue. Now, if you're using glue, you're gonna have to wait for this to dry, okay, before you do anything. So we're just gonna hold that down for a little bit. And essentially what you're gonna do is once that's dry, and you can use double-sided tape to speed this up, Okay, I want to stick the other side of the magnet over here onto the back of this panel so that then when they stand up, I'll just be able to click and hold them shut, okay? So I'm gonna just look and eyeball the magnet needs to go right about here. So I'm gonna stick the other side on and do not put them back together <clears throat> until after they're dry, just make sure that you stick it on the right way so that when it closes, they actually want, oops, see, that was silly. They'll want to um, stick to each other. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that, but that's how we're going to keep it shut when it's standing up. So I love it. So now um, we're, we're almost done. We're actually, and then before we start decorating, the other thing I want to do is I want this to stay on display, kind of standing up like a little house. So we're going to make a sort of a belly band to go around this. So that'll be our next step. 
Okay, so now we're going to make the belly band. It's super easy. You're just gonna need one strip that's 12 inches by two inches. Okay, so go ahead and cut that. And once you have that cut, so 12 by two, you're gonna line it up in your scoreboard. Okay. And you're gonna score it at four and a half and at nine. and then at 11 and three quarters. Okay, so once you have that scored, go ahead, fold on your score marks, and then just create this closure so that you end up with a triangle. So just close it up. bit of glue and you can decorate this later but that's basically it then we're going to get our album and simply slide it down in there and then our belly band should easily slide up and let our little album stay open and standing like that so sorry this is not a good angle I'm going to show you this way okay and then you can decorate this however you like so that's basically it this is the little this is the construction of our album um, now we can move on to decorating it uh, but let me just show you because my magnets are now stuck down so this is going to just clip on there with my magnet and I will be able to expand it out so so my photos on the ins will be on the inside, and then I have my my 3D frames, which I will decorate. And you just kind of have to set it up for the first time, and then it will stand very nicely on its own. But it's just so cute, just something different. Um, you can give as a little gift to a little one of your little children friends. <laughs> Um, I may give this to my niece like it's lots of fun to play with and there's lots of room to add photos and of course like I think the, what I really love about this is if you're a scrapbooker um, there's so many surfaces for you to be able to decorate and it's just it's just too cute so um, really easy folds back up nicely you just need to detach it wherever you put your magnets here's my magnet and that folds up into the little belly band for storage like that. Okay guys, I have to apologize for the shadows, but I just wanted to get this up and show you the album um, decorated. So I did go ahead and de um, decorate the belly band. So that is here. I just put on one of the cards from the doodle bug and decorated the sides. As you can see and just put a, some buttons because I just like that look you'll notice that when you're putting putting the belly band on now um, your back of it's gonna be thick so you might need to just bend this a little so it makes a bit more of a flat of a sort of like this D section in the back so that you can fit it nicely over top but otherwise it's it's not a big deal if it, it still fits in there really nicely and just sort of slides up because your little album can sit on a table like that if you like. Um, I love it. I just think it's so cute. So let me just show you my decorated pages. Get this off of here. So I just, I did have a bit of a different theme on each page. So when you open this up, we've got here, this is my pumpkin section. So you can add photos to these sections like they have to probably be pretty small maybe like two by two or three by four max or if you want to put some up here you can i say like i made this album because i thought it was really cute but it's more of a decorative piece on this side and you'll see there's lots of room for photos in the back but there's the first section okay i just this is just my little ghost town i love the way that back frame gives us that little bit of a 3d look i just that's just I don't know that's like everything to me so these were just some stickers I had in my stash that I got to finally use up 
All right, this section is my little ghost village. So I just cut this out from the doodle bug paper. Just fold those back in. And I'll show you um, a standing up view, um, top down view, so you can see what it all looks like. But there's a little pumpkin carving scene. These are Tim Holtz dies from this year, I think. And I just, um, I had made some a while back, so I decided to just use them here. All right now we have some little ghost, some little ghost, little ghost town here, Halloween parade. Uh, it's hard to see. Let me just angle this down. I put those little ghosts back there. So again, like you can definitely add some photos here if you like. And here's just another little scene with um, some more stamps and from my stash. Like there's a little cat that's from this year's lawn fawn, so 2021. Uh, I can't remember where these other guys are from, but I picked up some of the stickers from the doodle bug kit. Okay, so that's the front part that we worked on with the frame. Now, on the back is where I have lots of room for photos. So, oh, I do want to show you, I covered, this is where my magnet is that we put on. So I covered these sides with this funky ribbon I found. This is Doodlebug, but I think it's from a while back. Um, it just, it happens to match so perfectly. And Doodlebug does do that with their colors. So it's awesome if you have old Doodlebug sitting around, you can definitely use it. So I just covered that to cover up the magnet, but it still works really, really well. So let's just go through this side. Um, so I am put down some mats because this is where we'll do most of our photos will sit on the back side. So there's some mats and some bling, more mats. Well, that's this blank. Just Sometimes I do that just because I want to see what I'm going to put on and then decide how to mat it. Ghouls just want to have fun. I love, I love Doodlebug. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's too cute. And it really suits this style of album because it's just fun and funky and cute and really like, you know, just a few photos, just more for a fun little thing to have. Okay. Now, this, of course, comes around, and my magnets keep it nice and closed. And so what you want to do when you're standing it up is sort of pop out your frames and pull out the whole album like that. And I'm just going to switch camera position and show you what this looks like from the top. Okay, so here is the view from the top, and you can see I've got all my little windows. Uh, the front frame is sticking out and pulled open. Um, so really cute, lots of room for little photos, but mostly just a fun little album to make.